Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Console Info, a more in-depth look into technologies and new things that are going to make your programming life better. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at an upcoming React feature. It's a feature coming out in React 16.3, not yet out. It is the new Context API. And the big deal with this new Context API is that it is finally stable. You might have heard of the Context API in the past. It has been always considered experimental, cautioned against using. Well, in the new version of React 16.3, it is now officially supported by the React core team, and it is all the better for it. In this video, I'm going to actually show a simple application of how and why you might reach towards using the Context API. So without further ado, let's start coding. The first thing that we want to do is actually start a Create React app uh, boilerplate code because we don't actually want to uh, spend all that time configuring Webpack for ourselves. So we're going to let this go. It's going to install. I'm going to vamp for time while it goes. I've actually ran this a few times to try to warm that cache to make sure that we don't have to waste that much time. But let's actually just skip ahead, shall we? Cool. It's done. Okay. So let's go into our application. And again, this new version of the Context API is coming out in React 16.3, which again is not out. So to actually use that today, we have to install the next version of React so that we can actually play around with it. So to do that, we have to do yarn add React add next. If you're using NPM, it's React npm install dash dash save. Uh, we also do react dom at next. It's all those new versions. Presto change o 01258. Sweet. 16.3 alpha 2 is the current version that we have right now. Now let's open up the code and start coding. Let me get this nice and sized in frame so you can actually see it. Cool. Uh, and let's start our application. Yarn start. Sweet. So, let's open up the console because we are web developers and we always have our console open as we develop. And let's go into the code, go into source.app.js, and this is where we're going to be spending most of our time. So, we have our application here. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is make an example application of why you'd want to use the Context API. So, to start that, we're going to make a very simple application that you can log into. And to do that, we're going to make a very simple state object. Uh, we're going to have a one property called viewer. Uh, I use this term called viewer. It is the logged in user for your application, aka the viewer of your application. Uh, that's all that it is. And we're going to say down here, we're going to change this to a, uh, a div so that React doesn't yell at me when I do things later. But we're going to remove this and we're going to say this.state.viewer. If you are uh, logged in, we're going to say uh, logged in as, and we're going to do this.state.viewer. And if you are not logged in, we are going to ask you to log in. So we're going to use the new uh, fragment feature already out in 16.2. And we're going to make a input element. Uh, we're going to say uh, uh, placeholder equals log in, please. And we're going to say uh, on, nope, that's all we need. Oh, we need a ref ref equals r equals uh, this dot input ref equals r. Cool. And we're also going to make a button type submit. And we're going to say log in. And we're going to say on click, we want to do something. And the thing that we want to do is actually log that user in. So we're actually going to take that event object. We're going to go over here. And we're going to say uh, this dot login, we're going to say e dot target dot value, and we're actually going to define this method above, and you'll see why later in the video. So we'll grab this login up here, and we'll say uh, viewer, and we'll say this set state to viewer. Actually, we'll just say name, just to make things a little more clear. Sweet. And also, let's do a logout function as well because we want to be able to log out and we'll do this dot set state viewer null. Let's save that, see how it looks. Looks like a thing. And let's also wrap this in a react dot fragment because we want a button that you can log out of. And this will say on click equals this dot log out. 
Oh, that was a lot of typing. So let's actually see that in action. We're going to say login, please. My name is Harry. And I don't got anything. Oh, haha. -ha. We have to do, uh, we don't want this event. We actually want to take the input ref because that actually has the uh, this dot input ref dot value. Cool. And actually, let's change this to name, please. And I'll enhance this size. Nope, too big for me. Cool. Harry, log in. Look at that. Logged in as Harry. We have a fully functioning React application. Goodbye. I'll see you again tomorrow. I'm kidding. So, that's all well and good. However, this isn't the most flexible React application. If we want to actually make this a little bit more reusable, we actually will break this down into smaller components. So let's actually do that. Let's actually make this, turn it into a login form. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna say class login form extends component, and we're gonna have a render function as well. And what I'm going to do is just yank all of this and move it up here. Whoops. Return. Got to comment out these curly braces as I don't need them. And down here, I actually want to render that login form. And we have a lovely error because we have no state object in here. Now, to fix that, we'll just simply do state equals this, just to silence that warning. Cool. But however, now when I type in, of course, nothing works, we get an error, because these methods don't exist in this child component. And you could very easily fix this by passing down all these values as props. You know, you could do viewer equals this.state.viewer, all those methods as well. However, let's say that we actually want to make an application, not just a flimsy little demo application. And we're actually going to have is a, uh, a uh, nav component. And all that nav component does is just render the login form. And then when we actually render down here, we're actually going to remember the nav. And the problem that you see here is that to solve this, we actually have to do this thing called uh, prop drilling. We'd have to pass the nav, the viewer object. And then from here, we'd have to go up to the viewer and then pass in the viewer object here, et cetera, et cetera. And that is not the best thing. And this is where context comes into play. And this is a solution to prop drilling where you can actually share props and state with non-direct children or parent. So that you can actually pass down the state viewer and all these methods to any descendant, not a direct descendant. And that's where the true power of the context API comes in. So let's actually make our first context component. To do that, we're going to make a context, my context, and there is a new top level API method on the React library called create context. By default, you can pass in nothing in here. You can also pass in a default value. Uh, that's very useful if you use Flow or TypeScript and typing actually cares about what values it can be. For our case, we don't really care. It can be dynamically created, and we'll just not worry about it at all. We're going to create our own uh, provider component extends component and we're going to have a render function here and all we're going to render is my context dot provider and that is what is one component that is created when you create your own context and here all we want to render is this dot props dot children because this is just a child JSX component and this is the first step uh, but again, this doesn't really do much for us. So we can actually take this, we'll save it. We'll grab provider. Uh, and we have to wrap it around because a provider provides a root upon which any child in that tree can access the values that are provided by that context provider. Hence why it's called a provider. So we have this to no op. What we're actually gonna do is actually gonna yank all this stuff and move it into our provider. And then how you expose data in a provider is it takes one prop called value. And in this value, you can actually return uh, anything that you want. 
So in our case, we actually want to return viewer, which is this.state.viewer. We want to return login, which is this.login, and logout, which is this.logout. So cool, we got all that working. And again, since we're not using it, nothing works yet, right? Still erroring. So then what we actually want to do is have any child consume the provided values. So what we can do is in the login form, we can return uh, my context dot consumer. And what the consumer component takes is a child as function functionality. So the child is just a function and you're passed in the value that the consumer is being given. So here's a function, open it up here. And we're going to uh, yank all this, move it inside of here. And it's on this value object that we actually get access to all of these values that we have up here. So what we can actually do is destructure off of this and have the viewer have login and have logout off of the value object. So then here we can change this.state.viewer to just viewer, getting it from over there. This logout, we can just have it be logout. And then login is just going to be this.login. So let's save that. Reloads. And now let's try to see if this actually worked. Name, please. Harry. Look at that. An indirect passing of data through the context component. Very, very, very exciting. We have the provider, my contact provider, we have the data there. Then we actually have in the nav, the login form, the consumer, which then provides the data inside of there. And where this power truly comes into play is that now because we have this root provider, we can actually have this information shared across the entire application. We can just pass a consumer anywhere that we, anywhere that we want. So that we actually wanted to have that inside of here, we actually wanted to show the person's name at the top of the page. We can actually go uh, my contacts dot consumer. And again, it takes a function. So we're actually going to destructure right in here. Take the viewer object there. I'm going to do this, wrap it around. And we're going to say uh, viewer. We'll say uh, -doo -doo. welcome viewer. And otherwise, we'll say log in, yo. We'll save that. Log in, yo. Harry, please. Harry, look at that. A two-in-one combo. That's pretty cool. And then you can also do so many more things with this as well. So like to expand upon this pattern, uh, we can actually make this a little bit more of a standard API. We could have uh, there be a state object that you can pass in. Essentially, you can pass in the entire state object if you wanted to. You can also have like an actions object where you can actually have these nested so you actually can say where things are. So actually, you can just ch change this. We'll say, uh, we're going to do value.state, value.actions. And we'll go down here as well. And we're going to say uh, state viewer. Let's save it. Does it still work? It do! It do! That's very exciting. And then, of course, you actually want to make this more into a shareable thing. You'll actually create your own context, uh, uh, mycontext.js. And you can go here and yank all this fun stuff into there. And you can just export default. We'll export um, the provider. I will export uh, consumer, which equals mycontext.consumer. We'll save that. Now we can import in here, provider consumer from uh, my context, whatever you want to call it. We'll just rename all these things to consumer. Everything else is already named provider. Uh, haha, we need to actually import dependent libraries. And here we have it. Yes. Yes. Okay. And that was a very fast, hopefully very thorough introduction to the new Context API coming out in React 16.3.0. It is not yet out. 
I do not know when it is coming out. I don't think the React team itself knows when it's coming out, but when it does, you'll be rip and roar and ready to use the new Context API. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are not already a subscriber, please do subscribe down below and stay tuned for more videos in the next coming weeks. And I'll talk to you again then. Bye-bye.